Pete and his girlfriend Priscilla, sissy to most people, are sitting in front of the TV watching a new reality show on Netflix called How Desperate Can You Get? The premise is that contestants have to overcome their worst fears. If they can, their utility bills are paid for an entire decade. Like all the episode, this episode features unemployed people and people low on wages. One of them, Gary, is incredibly scared of spiders. He's what you call an arachnophobe. He used to be medicated for his fear, before he lost his job, that is. He's so scared right now that a wet patch forms on his jeans as soon as he sees what he has to do. The camera zooms in on it to rock his laughter from the studio audience. He's going to be covered in spiders, but not just any spiders. They will be Brazilian wandering spiders, sometimes said to have the most toxic spider venom in the world. A bite from one of these guys can cause serious injury or even death. Their highly toxic venom can make a right mess of a person's nervous system, causing all sorts of symptoms including a very irregular heartbeat or even a painful erection that won't go away. That's because their venom increases the levels of nitrous oxide in the body, which then increases blood flow. If things get worse, a person might vomit, have painful abdominal cramps, blurred vision, convulsions, and at the very worst, die from shock. It's no wonder the Greek word for them means murderous. Gary has signed an informed consent agreement, but even though the spiders can be aggressive, they don't usually bite if not provoked. They're being provoked because the show's famous host, Jake Paul, is pushing them around with a stick. The audience can't get enough. They don't feel bad. They know there are nurses on standby who have some anti-venom. Sissy is disgusted, but not nearly disgusted enough to turn off the show. Meanwhile, Pete is kind of sitting in a fetal position, barely able to look at the screen. He also has a debilitating arachnophobia. The other day he screamed when he saw a harmless daddy longlegs, or cellar spider to some. Sissy reminded him that there's nothing to fear, they don't even bite. But what she doesn't understand is his phobia is not about getting injured, it's about the spiders themselves. It's not rational, said Sissy, to which Pete responded, no it's not, but please make it go away. Pete is just glad that the Brazilian wandering spider doesn't live in North America, but in countries like South America. Still, he read a story about one ending up in the UK after being imported in a bunch of bananas. It even came with an egg sac, which contained thousands of little spiderlings. The family later said they were too traumatized to remain in the house. In 2005, a guy in the UK got bitten by a stowaway wandering spider. He managed to take a photo of it before he passed out. He was later saved by antivenom. Pete is thinking about these stories while watching the show. As he suspected, Gary fails to win the prize. He can take it no more. He stands up and screams, then runs through the studio, madly brushing the spiders off his body. As usual, Jake Paul shouts the catchphrase to the audience, How desperate is he? And they all shout back in unison, Not desperate enough! Pete might be scared of spiders, but he's also obsessed with them. For instance, he knows there are about 50,000 species of spider in the world. Just the US alone has about 3,500 species, and while very few of them can pose a real threat to humans, all spiders have fangs. They're all venomous too, although some are much more venomous than others. And that's how they do their dining. They catch their prey, sometimes with a web or by ambush, and then stick those fangs into it. That's when they inject their venom. Most spiders wouldn't even bother doing that to a human, mainly because we taste like crap. And anyway, we're just too big, and our skin is too thick for them to really do any significant damage. In the UK, when bananas aren't carrying venomous spiders into people's kitchens, only about six species of spiders have big enough mouths and fangs to deliver a venomous bite. If they were bigger though, well, Houston, we have a problem. And we're talking about a serious problem. In 1995, a famous arachnologist named Norman Platnick scared the world when he wrote that humans are never more than a few yards from a spider, wherever they are. After that, a gazillion articles came out saying people are never more than three feet away from a spider. But that wasn't exactly true. If you're in your garden, or walking through the woods, or in a field, you are literally surrounded by them. They'll be under your feet and marching all around you. But if you're in a parking lot or a shopping mall, the nearest spider might be quite a bit further than three feet away. Still, it is true that just about anywhere you go, you're probably very close to not just one spider, but many. We can't say how many spiders there are in the world, some species we won't even have discovered yet. Nonetheless, one study said there are quadrillions of spiders in the world. That is millions of billions of them. So yeah, you'll have some in your house, and you'll have armies in your garden, and if you got up and walked down the street, you'd be walking in a veritable spider city. Millions of billions of them mean they outnumber humans by a long, long way. And that's exactly what goes through Pete's mind as he watches the news on TV and can't quite believe what he's hearing. He just watched a reality show featuring spiders, and now the damn news is talking about spiders. What a day! The anchor is visibly shaken as he reads this just in announcement. To the right of his head is an image of a giant spider and people in the street running from it. 
Pete checks to see if he's watching Fox News or MSNBC. He's not. This is a serious news channel. The anchor says, Never before in human history has this been seen. Spiders as large as people are on the rampage, not just all over the US but all over the world. President Biden tweeted a moment ago, terrible scene in Milwaukee this morning, hashtag spider apocalypse. The anchor says that scientists are currently trying to understand the phenomenon, but so far any rational explanation is beyond all understanding. Some have hypothesized that chemical pollution could have caused some kind of genetic mutation, but even that seems highly unlikely. Still, that seems to be the most reasonable hypothesis since it's believed these new giant spiders are born this big. They are new, bigger generations of spiders, rather than the older spiders having just shot up in size. So far, they look like any species can be affected. Even in the days of dinosaurs, explains the anchor, spiders weren't this big. The largest in the fossil record was found in China not too long ago, and that only had a leg span of about 5 inches. Bigger things that looked like spiders have been found in fossils, and later turned out that they weren't spiders but aquatic animals. The news anchor finishes. More on the story as news comes in. For now, police are urging the public not to leave the house. Stay safe, folks. Sissy just laughs. She thinks it's some kind of prank. Like an April Fool's type joke. She tells Pete that there's just no way spiders could suddenly grow to the size of humans. She is, after all, a scientific materialist, and her background in biology tells her that there's no possible way that any animal's offspring could be born to such giant proportions and that this could happen to various species all at once around the globe. She just doesn't believe it. Pete looks at her with the possibly the most serious expression that he's ever pulled. This is literally his living nightmare. He doesn't want to believe it's true, but why would the news just lie? He tells Sissy, if we really want the truth, there's only one place we can find it. Sissy nods her head. She knows exactly what he's talking about. A minute later, they've cracked open Pete's laptop and are typing inside a YouTube search box. They have fact checkers for this kind of thing, says Pete. Just as an algorithmic recommendation for real polar bear versus gorilla fight video pops up at the side of another video titled, Scary! Teddy Bears Can Now Spread Rabies. Pete ignores these and types into the search box, Giant Spider US Attack. Sissy has found something after doing a Google search on her computer. Listen to this, she tells Pete. Female spiders produce either one egg sac containing several to a thousand eggs or several egg sacs, each with successively fewer eggs. Pete thinks about how long it would take for giant spiders to take over. Right now, he's about to choose from one of scores of video that apparently feature attacks in houses and in the streets. He hits play on one, starts with a guy apparently in California, like Pete and Sissy, who looks into the camera and says he can't believe what he's seeing. He then turns the phone around and shows the camera what looks like a colossal house spider carrying an old guy around between his jaws. The guy is screaming like crazy, but then he just goes quiet all of a sudden. Pete clicks on other videos. They're all similar, full of people running down streets, running out of their houses, and in some of them cars crashing as they try to swerve out of the way of huge spiders of all types. One shows a group of school children stuck in a large web, with the spider slowly walking their direction. Another video at a gas station looks like it's straight out of the movie Eight-Legged Freaks. They are incredibly fast. They can easily pick people off. Even the timidest of spiders now has the capacity to rip someone's head right off. What used to be so little venom that it hardly would cause a human to notice is now potent enough to kill someone in a matter of seconds. Nowhere is safe. Even the larger spiders can get into the smallest spaces. Jumping spiders seem to be everywhere too. One second they aren't there and then pow, they're right there in front of people. These things used to be fuzzy and cute and so tiny no one ever cared about them. Now they're jumping over buildings with ease. They seem to be able to see things way off in the distance, and then they just leap and catch the running human in their mouth. It looks like they can jump something like 150 feet, so with big fangs and binocular eyes and amazing athleticism, they're just as dangerous as any kind of spider. In fact, it seems to Pete that every single species is now a killing machine. This is a massacre, Pete tells Sissy, who now completely believes they're in danger. Just then she looks to the side. She screams to Pete, get down! A huge black widow is scraping their house window with its feet, which are now the size of human shoes. Pete is well aware that the black widows are comb-footed spiders. He can see this one's hairy legs. He knows that from those bristles, it could easily produce some silk in which to entomb him and Sissy until it decides to come back and eat them. Even more disturbing, outside in the street, three giant tarantulas march by. Pete knows they're found in LA only because Kim Kardashian saw some in her garden not long ago. It's not nighttime yet, so it's unusual for tarantulas to go out hunting, but the size change might have changed their habits. They're good hunters too, employing the ambush tactic since they don't make webs. These new giant ones must have incredibly powerful jaws, powerful enough to crush a human. And anyway, even if the human initially doesn't die from being crushed, the venom will paralyze them anyway. Just then, as Sissy knocks over a book that falls onto the hardwood floor, Pete sees the thousands of hairs on the tarantula's legs stand on end. 
They can detect the slightest vibration. Don't move at all, Pete tells Sissy. They both decide to do the sensible thing, that is, to get as much food and water as possible and go into one room. First, they block every door in the house. Then, they put their wardrobes and beds up against the window. A spider will have to fight to get inside this house, thinks Sissy. She's right, but how long can they hold out? The next day, they watch the news and hear about what's going on in the world. Some people have tried to fight the spiders, but it hasn't really worked out. One guy in England is shown in a video ripping off his t-shirt and walking toward what used to be called a giant house spider. Come on, come on, let's have at it, shouts the guy as he walks forward wielding what looks like a machete. The spider flies at him so fast you can only see a blur. When they were a normal size, those things could run half a meter per second. Now they're like rockets, half of the guys stuffed in the spider's mouth in no time at all. All spiders are different, but if you take into account the proportions of when spiders were their regular size, some of them were around 250 times stronger than a human. Darwin's bark spider could spin silk that was 10 times strong as Kevlar. Now the giant web spinning spiders can wrap up anything, it seems, even tanks. That actually happened when the US military sent tanks into the streets of New York City. They were soon all stationary, covered in thick silk. The stuff is now like insanely strong rope, five times stronger than steel, and the spiders can wrap things up so damn fast. The average web takes about an hour to build, but man, those new giant webs are something to behold. Some spiders can lift about 160 times their own body weight. So if we say the human-sized ones are about 100 kilograms, that might give them the ability to lift about 16,000 kilograms. That's actually about the weight of two tanks or three African elephants. Okay, so no one knows the exact math, but people can see that giant spiders are incredibly strong. This is how some spiders have managed to knock down house walls. Now that humans are all mostly hiding, the spiders don't have much choice. Humans are the most plentiful source of food. No longer will a housefly be enough of a meal for a spider, but dogs and cats and cattle are fair game. One video on YouTube shows the aftermath of an industrial farm. Hundreds of cows are dead, some still being eaten by just as many spiders. Let's remember here that when spiders were all small, they still ate an estimated 725 million tons of insects every year. Now, humans have replaced insects, and the spiders need much more food than before to power their large bodies. And that's a lot of dead bodies. It's basically the entire human race. In fact, it's estimated a few years ago that the entire human race weighs about 316 million tons. So if all spiders became giants, the entire human race won't last them half a year. Thank God for cattle, pets, and other wild animals, but things don't look so good. At least I don't feel silly now about having an irrational fear, Pete says to Sissy as they sit huddled in the corner of the kitchen. A pot of pasta is on the boil. They have perhaps about four days of food left. After that, they're not sure what they'll do. They've heard things mentioned on the news about heavy artillery, missiles, airstrikes, about nuclear weapons, but the spiders are literally everywhere. So killing them means killing a lot of humans. We're talking about getting rid of a significant part of the human race. Chemical weapons have also been discussed, but again, the loss of human life would be catastrophic with a capital C. Most of the wealthiest people, the world leaders, kings, queens, they're all safe in underground bunkers. It's for the greater good, they tell the public. They can stay there for years if need be. Most cities in the world still have electricity. Many people still have the internet, but for how long, no one knows. Sissy is using the internet when she pulls up an article written in 2017 by the Washington Post. The title is, Spiders Could Theoretically Eat Every Human on Earth in One Year. The first paragraph goes, spiders are quite literally all around us. A recent entomological survey of North Carolina homes turned up spiders in 100% of them, including 68% of bathrooms and more than three quarters of bedrooms. Those were the normal sized ones who ate 10 times their body weight every day, or most did at least. It's just good luck then that no giant ones have yet been born in Pete and Sissy's house. Then, right at that moment, they hear a crashing sound from upstairs. It sounds like pictures are falling off walls and glass is breaking. Then they hear thump, 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 and silence. Suddenly, a hairy leg smashes through the kitchen door, soon followed by a head with eight eyes. It's a wolf spider and it looks hungry. Pete and Sissy are gonna die. Everyone in the world is gonna die. If spiders were human-sized, we wouldn't have a chance. Now, you need to watch this other animal horror show, Why You Wouldn't Survive a Town Full of Ants, or get down with some real-life content and I was swarmed by fire ants and survived. True story.